Well, Garrett, when you talk about like taking that next step and there's lots of guys, I think you can look at what they did the first couple of games and kind of see that there's definitely they're trending in the right direction. Um, Jason Tatum, though, for a minute, Gary, he looks bigger to me. And I'm not sure that's necessarily a good thing. Like when he came to the league, he clearly had to bulk up because he was too damn skinny. He was going to get tossed around like a wet rag doll if he didn't. And now he's at the point where he's starting to look like he's a damn like like power forward in the making the way his body's feeling. I mean, I'm curious, you and Kwani thoughts on this. Are you concerned that he might be putting on too much weight? The Atlas Podcast is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the A-List Podcast with A. Sherrod Blakely and Gary Washburn. I'm Kwani Lunis, and the preseason has officially begun. The Celtics are playing basketball. We can finally see what this new team really looks like. So let's just start with the first two preseason games. We'll start with their preseason opener, which was against Philly on Sunday. Pritchard scores 26, Porzingis scores 17, makes the first three shots. And then, of course, we can get into Monday's game as well. But let's start with the very first initial look that you guys got against Philadelphia. What did you think about that team? Bro, and Pritchard was in a building. Yeah. Bro, Bro <laughs> and Pritchard was in the building, fresh off of inking a four-year, $30 million contract. Listen, you know how most of us, when you get that first big check, what do you do? <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Foolishness. You just act a fool with your first check, first big check. Peyton Pritchard was like, nah, I'm all about the business. I'm going to show y'all why they put that kind of money into me, uh, even though, you know, up to this point in his career, if we're being honest and real, Peyton hasn't really shown the game that you would expect for someone to get that kind of money. But a lot of it has to do with opportunity. I think Peyton up to this point, really hasn't had an opportunity to showcase what he can do. And with Marcus Smart gone, with Malcolm Brogdon gone, with Drew Holiday in the mix, but Drew still kind of acclimating himself, this was Peyton's chance to really kind of show what he could do and the type of player that he could be. And he had a great game. Now, is he going to give you 26 a night? No. Uh, that that damn sure not going to happen. But you at least know that he's engaged in a way of doing the things that you know he's capable of doing. And when his opportunity to play on a big stage and, and really kind of have more frankly, weight of the of the team on his shoulders, he stepped up and handled his business. So I, I get paid props for stepping up in that first game, putting up big numbers and helping him get that win. Yeah, I, the preseason opener was a, a, you know, solid effort in terms of they got everybody in the game. You know, poor Zingas, we got some flashes of what he can do. Drew Holiday came off the bench, but Missoula told us not to look in too much into what um, – you know, his lineups were, don't think that that's going to be the starting lineup on opening night. And it also could be different starting lineups on different nights, considering uh, the opponent and, and, you know, who they're facing, big team, small team, et cetera. So it was good to just see everybody out there. Um, you know, Jalen trying to show his his improved game. Uh, Jason Tatum got off to a little bit slow start. And then to see the guys like Peyton, come off the bench, score 26 points, and and guys play with more confidence. I guess the thing you want to see in the preseason is whether guys have taken that next step, whether they have improved their game, all the stuff that they've worked on in the offseason. How does it look? Do they look more physically imposing? Do they look more confident? Do they appear like they're going to really help this team or take another step forward? And I think that that's what the encouraging part about the first two games were he, obviously Monday against the Knicks where they didn't play any uh, their starters. And, you know, it was, a, it was a lot of the guys coming off the bench who were going to be fighting for minutes and, and they show what they could do. So overall, I thought the first two games were positive games. Uh, Joe Mazzula obviously seems a little bit more comfortable in his position, more comfortable in his skin, more comfortable with what he's about to do and, and the journey that they're about to embark on. So I, I think it was uh, all positive. No, you know, the only the only down was uh, Jay Scrub, a guy I was looking forward to to seeing. A uh, two way contract, uh, a guy who's kind of come from nowhere, came from the JC ranks, and not played Division One ball. Um, tears his ACL in practice, and that's got to be hard for him. He trying to he gets his shot. He's trying to show himself, and and tears his knee up in practice, and is probably out for the whole year. And so now the Celtics do they. What do they do with this two-way contract? Do they release, do they waive him and sign someone else? Do they wait for him to rehab? What do they do? Because that's a tough position to be in when um, 
you're on a contract and you all of a sudden uh, that's a two-way deal then suffer a season in the injury. I was really looking forward to seeing him and what he could do because uh, I know he was trying to take that next step. You like to see the kids work hard. Um, so I, that was the only unfortunate part of the first two games. Well, Garrett, when you talk about like taking that next step and there's lots of guys, I think you can look at what they did the first couple of games and kind of see that there's definitely, they're trending in the right direction. Um, Jason Tatum though, for a minute, Gary, he looks bigger to me. And I'm not sure that's necessarily a good thing. Like when he came to the league, he clearly had to bulk up because he was too damn skinny. He was going to get tossed around like a wet rag doll if he didn't. And now he's at the point where he's starting to look like he's a damn, like, like, power forward into making the way his body's feeling out. I mean, I'm curious, you and Kwani's thoughts on this. Are you concerned that he might be putting on too much weight and it might be affecting his shot making? I, I'm not, not yet. But you're right, he does look, I know you both saw like the year one and the yeah side-by-side -side photo, but I don't think it's that bad, but I guess we need a bigger sample size. What yeah, do I don't, I think it, 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 if you're a Celtics fan, you hope it helps him in the post. You hope right. he's yeah, able to yeah. be more physical in the paint, uh, finish through contact, be a little bit stronger at the, with the ball. Um, you hope that it doesn't affect his three-point shot um, or that he's playing a little bit stiff. Um, I that's do, what I worry about. Because given like football, about. football player body build. Like, yeah, you do want to like get corner. stronger and you do want to – so I think – to be honest with you, I think this is the best Jason's gonna should look like the most sculpted. Like, okay, yeah. Jason, you've proved your point. Stop there. Stop. You ain't getting. No, don't get no bigger. Yeah. Um, right. You know, you're you're six ten. You're gonna be about. You know, you want to get two twenty. You know, maybe something like that at most. Um, he's probably came into the league. He might he might have been like one ninety five. Um, maybe. Yeah. Maybe one ninety. Um. So now he's got the bulk. Let's see what happens. But I'm not concerned as much with the bulk. You hope it helps him. But I do think, Sherrod, you're right. Like, I would say if I'm the Celtics and trainers and I'm Missoula and Brad, like, stop, you know, uh, stop with the trying to, you know, break the weight, uh, lift the record, you know, uh, in, 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 in the local gyms. And just get stronger and get more wiry strength, strength as opposed to bulky. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. That's guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. It absolutely is. The app is easy to use, and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston. Kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sarad, you mentioned Pritchard's effect on their first game, but moving on to that game against New York, they did lose seven point loss. Pritchard had 21, five assists, three rebounds. But then Delano Banton is the one that kind of stood out, I would say, with the 20 points. What did you two see in his game? And coming off of the bench, how is that going to be a plus for the Celtics? What do you think, Gary? Because you've seen a little bit more than I have. I like Banton. I still think he's more of a project. Um, he didn't play a lot in these years, years in Toronto. He's still a young guy. But I think this bench is going to be interesting because there's going to be a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have, you know, whoever is, is the odd man out in the starting five, whether it be Derek White or Drew Holiday or whatever, you know. It like still we'd be TBD. A, <laughs> yeah, there's just that you know White would be a six man or whoever would be a six man. You got your strong six, then you got like Hauser, and you got old Shea Brissett, Sherrod's buddy, and, you know <laughs> Syracuse. Uh, yeah, yeah, All we, right, get, we get it. They get it. All right. uh, go Orange. Anyway, <laughs> um, you get those guys, but I also think there's some dogs in this team. Like you know, I like Kieta, uh, Nemus Kieta. I liked um, 
Definitely like Lamar Stevens. Definitely liked him. Thought he put some good minutes together. Banton, you got guys who are fighting for their NBA, not lives. Yeah, but actually. But they're fighting for like to get a role on a team, a role that they, a consistent role. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a lot of competitive ball in camp that I think will help this team and help the bench because the bench needed help. It needed a boost, right? You know, said you got your, you know, you got your, your strong six. Um, and then you got Hauser and Peyton. And you got guys who have been NBA. But even Peyton's got something to prove. Hauser's got something to prove. Stevens, Banton. So I was impressed with Banton. Um, you know, I think the, his Achilles heel has been his shooting over the years. You know, as Nick Nurse told us before the game, he just said he, he didn't really, wasn't really a good shooter. Um, but if he can knock down that shot, the same with Lamar Stevens, like their bench can be young and athletic. And that's what you want. You want to bring like the one thing I think they should take from the Miami Heat is like guys like Haywood Highsmith, guys that you ain't, you know, not household names, but bringing off athletic guys off the bench, not a bunch of old dudes, um, bringing guys out that, that, are, that got something to play for. And the bench is filled with guys with something to play for. Yeah. And I mean, and the thing about those type of players is, is that you you have to, as a coaching staff, really help them hone in and develop one specific skill that it really amplifies their athleticism. For example, if they have this great wingspan and, and lateral quickness, help them become an elite defender. If they really move well without the ball, help them to just you know run along that baseline and find ways to get easy baskets. If they have a nice shooting stroke or maybe it needs a, the mechanics need a little bit of refinement, help them to become a 3 and D guy. Figure out a way that they can give you something that can, really, again, give you something that you don't have. Because when I look at the Celtics roster and I look at those guys at the end of the bench, first and foremost, they're thirsty as hell. I mean, they, they, they're they even though they're not necessarily playing for their basketball lives, they're approaching these games as if they're playing for their basketball lives. Mm -hmm. And you need to have that edge, that intensity, that energy coming off your bench, particularly when you got a team that is as top heavy as the Celtics are. They are legitimately six, seven strong uh, night in and night out. But typically when you win a championship, there's that eighth, ninth guy who can help you win a game that you may not otherwise win could be the difference between winning a championship and not. The Celtics could have used a guy like that, you know, a couple of years ago when they were in the NBA Finals. They needed one guy to be a difference maker for one night uh, and help them get a win. And that could have been the difference between turning that series around against the Warriors. So they have a lot of those type of players. When you look at Lamar Stevens, you look at O'Shea Brissett, you look at, you know, you know, a number of guys that aren't that weren't with the team a year ago. And if you're, you know, if you're Joe Missoula, that's maybe the biggest challenge you have is not so much figuring out how to make your, your core group work because those guys are so talented. They're going to figure things out just because they're that good and they're that talented. But how can you supplement them? How can you get the most out of those guys at the end of the bench who are hungry, who are thirsty? They want to be better. They want to be coached. They want to be improved upon. How can you do that within the confines of, of figuring out which buttons to push on which nights? So, again, there's a lot of things that the preseason, I hope, will get a little bit of clarity on. But to me, the biggest thing is how are you going to figure – how are you going to – craft that bench uh, going forward because your, your bench is going to help you win some games. Your starters are going to carry the load most nights, but you're going to have at least one or two games every month on a minimum where your bench is going to have to really step up in order to win. And in the playoffs, you're probably going to have in the best of seven series at least one or maybe two games where your bench is going to be a difference maker, good or bad. So you want that to be on a positive ledger side if you're the Celtics, obviously. So speaking of, specifically about Banton, what do you think the, uh, again, we're everything we talk about early on in the season is going to be the very small data that we have based off of how they play. But do you think this performance puts him in the rotational conversation just yet? I do. I think it, it yeah, I, I, do. I think it does. Yeah. Um, but I, I, but by no means is it, it that's going to be a fluid thing all year. Um, yeah. When I look at these first couple of games, if there's one guy who I thought would be, you know, pretty much in that top, if they went nine deep, would be pretty much there night in and night out. It's mm -hmm. Sam Hauser. And I'm not sure that's the case. 
Because here's the thing: if Sam's not knocking down shots and he's not a he's not a, a great rebounder, and and I think he's he's not nearly as bad a defender as people think he is. Um, but if he's not knocking down shots, his value is very very limited. Whereas a guy like Banton it shows a lot of versatility. Brissett, not a great three point shooter, but is a pretty good defender and rebounder, and he can knock down an open shot from time to time. Those are the kind of things that are going to get you on the floor when you're coming off that bench and Sam Hauser to me that's the one guy that I think so far has been a little bit of a disappointment because he's better than what we've seen so far it's just a matter of can he get into a flow get into a rhythm and become that you know more into the shooter that we know he is capable of being uh it remains to be seen if that's the case I also think uh Svi Mihalik right you said it better than I did the last time we yeah. talked about him. Like, I, don't know you call him I think three. he is. I mean, he had five threes. You can't guard nobody, G. Yeah, I think he. I think he knows his role, and I think if Hauser slips, she could take some of those minutes. I think she's an NBA player. Like the one thing that they have that I saw last night in the Knicks game was they got all all those guys on the floor were NBA players. Even J.D. Davidson, it was good to see him take a step and learn pl- to play more of a point guard role. Now, I don't know how Peyton's extension affects uh, Davidson, because I think I-, I thought that was a guy they might, might kind of use to replace Peyton as kind of a backup point guard eventually. But I think he'll do a good full year in the G League again, and and then they'll make a decision on him in the future going forward. But I liked, I liked the game J.D. Davidson had, but I think she – like I liked what he was able to do out there. Um, he he can shoot from any spot in the floor, and they don't have that. They don't have that, you know. And and you'd like to say Hauser could be that guy, but he's been inconsistent. They don't have that Duncan Robinson, that dude who just can be a game changer just from his shooting, right? Like and that, and like believe me, Duncan's got his issues, and Duncan is not the greatest defender and all that. But that dude can change a game in two to three possessions with two to three threes, just boom, boom, boom. And I thought Speed is, is a guy, when he gets hot, he can shoot. And you need shooters on your team. The Celtics have lacked shooting over the years. And Hauser, I think he started at one for 13. I don't know, uh, one for 14, I'm not sure. But like Sherrod said, he's had two subpar games. You know, his minutes aren't guaranteed. But I think Shri is a guy who can get also get some minutes. Not all those guys are going to play, but I think the encouraging sign for Celtic fans is that this bench actually is filled with NBA caliber players, mm-hmm. not the Jawan Morgans and the, some of these guys. No, nothing against that no, guy personally. It's, 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 it's always a bad idea when you start listing names. Some of these guys who just were not in, who are not no longer in the league, who are overseas or something, not even in camps like you. Like you need NBA guys on your bench and let them fight it out for minutes. If a guy's unhappy, see about trading him at the deadline or figure it out. Um, but I, I like the fact that they, when I looked at the game on Monday with guys like Lamar Stevens, like it's like, man, they got NBA players and they pushed the Knicks. The Knicks were playing, you know, they didn't play all their guys 40 minutes, but they, it was their opener, right? It was a Knicks opener. So they played Brunson and Randall and Barrett. And Quigley, and they played their main guys. They kind of emptied the bench in in the fourth quarter, but the Celtics hung with the first team Knicks, and that's encouraging. These are your hiring goals, they say. They're very aggressive, but when you, everyone looks to you, you're calm. Why? Because you know you don't need a miracle, you need Indeed. Indeed is a hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills. Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. They streamline hiring with powerful tools that can help you find your match candidates. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Candidates you you invite to apply are three times more likely, likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in the search. Indeed does the hard work for you, and they show you candidates whose resume, once again, on Indeed, fit the job description immediately after you post so that you can hire faster. Even better, Indeed's the only job site where you only pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements. 
Indeed is an unbelievably powerful hiring platform delivering four times more hires than all other job sites combined, according to Talent Nest in 2019. You can start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job posts at indeed.com slash a list offer good for a limited time claim your 75 dollar credit right now at indeed.com slash a list once again indeed.com slash a list and show the that support by saying you heard this on the podcast indeed.com slash a list terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed all right moving on to jason tatum the star of this team we saw him play against Philly he struggled a little bit didn't play against New York so are you concerned about the fact that he didn't play as well as he was expected to play in the first game oh no hell no, no <laughs> not, I'm not not at all um <laughs> yeah I, I was I was listening to the the ESPN broadcast and, and JD, JJ Reddick made a real he told a really uh, interesting story and I think it, it's very applicable to Jason Tatum he talked about when he, he was a rookie how they were playing like the Atlanta Hawks and, and he was trying to, you know, do what rookies do, trying to make an impression. He's going hundred miles an hour. And Joe Johnson is just like, bro, man, chilling, just kind of going through the motions. And that's when, you know, the, the moral of the story that Jay, that JJ was telling was how, you know, when you're a veteran player, you don't approach preseason games as if they're games. It's just a glorified practice. So for you, yeah. it's about getting your cardio it's about it's not even so much about getting into a rhythm shooting a ball. It's about just getting your body physically in the flow of the action. And so that's why with, with Tatum, I'm not worried about his shot making because I think it's going to be there when it matters most. Uh, for me, the, the big thing for him is just to be out there, get some cardio, try to get his teammates involved, because to me, that's a part of his game that I like to see growth in, just getting others involved. And I think he's made growth in that area the last two or three years. Keep building on that. Uh, and as far as shot making, that's going to come. I mean, I, I, that's that's the last thing I'm worried about with Jason Tatum. But I can certainly understand if if you're looking for him to be like Jason Tatum regular season in preseason game one or two, which ain't realistic, you're freaking out about how he's, he's shot the ball. He hasn't shot the ball well. But uh, again, I'm not consumed by that because at the end of the day, it's preseason. And veteran players know that. That's why, you know. And they're not tripping. Uh, when coach says come out, players are like damn near sprinting to get off the damn floor because they just want to get out and get some cardio. So, not concerned. You know, <laughs> I think Jason will be fine. I think he wants to, like Sherrod said, get in, get in basketball, complete basketball shape, um, get used to his new teammates, maybe a new role. And I do think he wants to work on his his three point game. I do think he wants to start off and probably get, get off the better starts. And I think that was maybe one of his problems over the years is just starting slow and, and especially in the playoffs, the one for tens and then coming back and having this crazy second half to where, you know, he ends up having a great game. Um, I think he wants to start faster, but I'm not concerned about the men's. I do think he was emphasizing, as Shiraz had made the point of the, of the preseason, is to emphasize games, parts of your game that you just want to do. I think Jason was trying to attack the rim. He was trying to, he was trying to get to the free throw line. He was trying to do some work on some things as opposed to like, okay, I'm going to run this offense because we need to win this game. So I think the priorities were a little different than a normal regular season game, but I'm not concerned with, with Jason shooting. All right. Well, Jalen Brown, I know you both saw the video that was posted on the internet, which honestly, uh, editorially wise, there was no point in that video. Like there wasn't anything happening. He was just dribbling, happened to be with his left, happened to not be as successful as you'd expect it to be for a professional basketball player. But if you guys didn't see it, it's probably on Twitter that now called X, but Jalen's left hand. What do you two think? Are Do we need to talk about that this early in the season or are we just being trolled by everyone? <laughs> we're totally being trolled we are totally because but, why but here's, but here's the thing though i mean it, it's it's something that is going to come up night in and night out because it stands out and it's it sta- and and really you know it's not nearly as bad as that video that posted on twitter it ain't that bad that but, didn't need to be there 
Yeah, <laughs> but but there were moments in that first game where you know that left that left hand dribble was not as tight as it should be, and I I think that's a, that's part of just a work in progress with Jalen. I think it's some, it's something that he is very well aware of, uh, and I think he is making strides to get better. But he's got some work to do because um, I've still I'm I'm not comfortable or confident in his ability to use that left handed dribble drive to get to where he wants to get to. Um, I, too many times I think he gets caught up whether he gets poked or he gets uh, is gets it bounces off of his foot or something goes wrong more times than it should. Uh, and and so I again one of the benefits of having a guy like Drew Holiday is that Jalen doesn't have to dribble as much in half court sets. Uh, he can be set up to attack folks in a much more conventional dribble drive finish at the rim type of manner, as opposed to bringing a ball up and then dribbling, a, you know, trying to shake free from a guy who's guarding you and maybe use a screen to do that. Maybe not. So I, it's it's not where I wish it were, um, but it's not. I wouldn't call it trash or atrocious, which is some of the descriptions I remember seeing on social media. It ain't that. Uh, it's just not great yet. Yeah, um, I'm not as concerned about Jalen dribbling the, the ball behind his back, as the video showed, as I am his decision making. And there was one play against Philadelphia that was a concern. He had kind of a breakaway. He stole the ball and he dribbled and there were three guys behind him and he decided to go one for three on three and he got ripped. And that's not only always handle. Yeah, he could have done, um, you know, he could have done, I don't know, Stefan Marbury or whoever, Kyrie Irving and dribbled in between the three and got to the rim and took, but that's not his game. Right. And what I'd like to see from Jalen is play your game. One on three is not your game. Now, if you get the ball up and get to the rim, that is your game. But you dribbling through three defenders and getting the ball, that's going to be hard. The scouting report says, rip them, weak handle. So you got to get, you, you when you see three defenders and you're like, oh, I can take all three. No, you take the dribble and you dribble back out and you hold it up and you keep that key possession. Don't give the ball away. And I saw he was dribbling and then somebody came from behind now should somebody have called ball or or you know warned them and he got stripped but it was also he was taking on three defenders so it's not necessarily dribbling it's the decision making dribbling into traffic dribbling into against defenders who know how to rip rip the ball right right like that's what i would like to see better from Jalen, not the handle okay I think he's working on it. I mean, I've seen him work. Like, he ain't working on his handle. No, he is. Like, he, these dudes aren't stupid. They know what their weaknesses are. They know what they need to work on. Now, will Jalen ever be a great ball handler? Will he ever be Marcus Haynes? Look that up. Google that, folks. Look, YouTube Marcus Haynes. You don't know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Um, that's YouTube, Kwani, because that's way before your time. Okay, thank you, Gary. <laughs> but... Um, he's a great globe trotter and used to dribble like still the greatest dribble I've ever seen. And maybe next, maybe second is Isaiah Thomas, um, the original OG Isaiah. Uh, yeah, the one without the extra A. Yes. <laughs> but he's never going to be those guys. But what he can do is make better on court decisions with the ball, not dribble into traffic if you don't have that elite handle to where you're going to keep the ball. Kyrie Irving can do that. You know, Steph Curry can do that, but you're not, you know, but you're not that guy. So when you're taking one on three, either pull up for a jumper or, but don't try to dribble in between three defenders because he got ripped and Philadelphia took it back down the floor. And to me, that's what concerns me, the decision-making, not necessarily ball handling, knowing in your back of your mind, I'm not an elite ball handler, so I should not dribble into three defenders to try to get to the basket. If he doesn't do that, then he doesn't get exposed with his dribbling. If he makes a better decision, if he sees three defenders, pass it on out, post up, take a short jumper, go hard to the basket with one dribble, not do, 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 you know, but I honestly, it, you know, I see him 
working on his handle, left-handed, working, you know, with the coaches, you know, trying to get to the basket, be crafty. I see him working on it. So I would, if I was a Celtic fan, I wouldn't be concerned. Oh, he hasn't worked on his handles. I think, I mean, Jalen knows his weaknesses. The team is telling him, telling him that. The world is telling him that. Twitter is telling him that. I'm sure they tell him that in the streets. But I think he's just got to be a better decision maker. If he makes better decisions and cuts down one or two of those two turnovers per game, I ain't worried about his dribbling. Mm-hmm. All right, Jalen, if you're listening, you know the answer now. We got you. <laughs> All right. Who would you two say are, if any, other standouts from the two preseason season games that oh you shit oh my gosh can you see oh, no yeah. seriously though he's been that's good that's actually clever oh shit can you see that's good i like that one. he's 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 been good Kwani, he's, Kwani, that ain't clever stop that bad. don't do that that's don't not clever. Good, bad dad <laughs> joke no oh, oh, shit can you please. see was pretty good coin it's like get you're from listen, jersey get, you, you uh, that's a, that's impressive. Boston changed me. Boston changed me for the worse. The, the dad jokes as me now. Corny, the so corny proud dad me. with no kids. <laughs> uh, don't encourage him, please. All right, all right. O'Shea anyway, set. Gary Washburn's defensive player of the year, front runner. O'Shea has been good. I thought he was, I, I, again. I, I think for him, the key is just being consistent, and really, all those guys on the bench, and that doesn't mean. You have to score 10, 15 points every night and get six, seven rebounds. You just have to have a presence. Make your impact felt night in and night out. There are a lot of games where guys may only play six, seven minutes, but they're six productive minutes where they're defending, they're rebounding, they're boxing out, they're closing out on shooters. They're doing all the little things that lead to runs that your team has to go on in order to be successful. And I thought O'Shea, you know, more so in game one than game two, but I thought he did a good job of just being active and engaged, uh, trying to bring some energy in the building. That dunk he had that got waved off. Um, you know, little things that may not seem like that big a deal in the final box score, you come to realize were really important during a key critical stretch that the team went on. And so, you know, O'Shea, he, he to me, he's he's been one of those guys that's been much, been I think a little bit better than I think a lot of people thought. Hmm, I'm trying to look here, and um, according to my my hood research, yeah, my hood research, I like Lamar <laughs> Stevens. Uh, I thought, I thought Kata played a good, solid, you know, uh, he was hey, what are you five. drinking, Sherrod? Look at that. I'm sorry, but look at this container. Hold up. Got a whole gallon in that. Yeah. It's a jug. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> right. You want to give us some? You want to pass? Right. You sure do that. the 40s. the 40s. <laughs> It's five o'clock. It's I don't do o'clock. that stuff, good. Gary. What you're are off, you talking you about? Clock. I've you're never done clock. that stuff. You off the clock? <laughs> <laughs> he said five o four. I'm ready. It's middle time. <laughs> I've I've never done that stuff it's before, really Gary. Time. What are you talking about? Goodness. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, I, I thought I thought Keita was strong. You know, four re- seven points, four rebounds, fourteen minutes. Um, I, I thought you know Stevens. I'm just gonna say Stevens. 27 minutes, 11 points, eight rebounds, um, an assist and a steal. You know, three offensive rebounds, which is really the Celt- what, the, what the Celtics need. And Keita, four offensive rebounds. So dudes hungry around the basket are going to give the Celtics extra possessions. That's what they need. I, I thought that they performed, the bench performed well. Jordan Wall, seven rebounds in 19 minutes. I thought he was okay, you know. Um I thought overall there was no. I said Hauser two for nine from three, you know, but he still had eight rebounds in twenty five minutes. So I mean, everybody did their share. I don't think that there was someone out there who was like, man, this dude don't look ready. I, I didn't see that, um, but I was replaced re- with Kid and, and Lamar Stevens. I think Lamar Stevens is going to help this team. All right, quickly looking around the NBA, specifically at. Victor, Wemby, and Shet Holgrim, they both had their debuts, and we were lucky that they were actually playing each other. What, did it go better or worse than you expected for either player and team? Well, player, not the team. Better. They were better than I thought they'd they would be. They looked good. They looked good. I mean, they, they, they looked, looked like, if you're saying 
this is the future of the NBA. How is this going to look? It's like, damn, they both look good. And, they and went the a whole I'm, year for Chet at that. So that right. made the anticipation yeah. even bigger. Yeah, I mean, Chet, Chet's on that, that Ben Simmons redshirt <laughs> freshman program. But looking um, better than Ben could. Ben Simmons slash Joel. And Joel, I think Joel and B might have been on that same program. <laughs> okay, right. so it's hit or miss. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but no, they, they both look good. They both look athletic. They they were basically what they were. They played the way that they were expected to play, and mm-hmm. that's to be dominant, be impactful, run the floor really well, show uh, just an offensive you know skill set that stands out because of how tall and long they are. Uh, put the ball on the floor. Both of those guys can put the ball on the floor a little bit. Uh, Chet, I think, is better at that than than Victor. But at the end of the day, you know, this is going to be. You know, two guys that are going to be going at each other for for years to come. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and with both of them being out west, you know, it's they're going to have to knock off one another to get to the finals uh, over the long extended period of of, of their their time in the NBA, and that's going to be interesting uh, to see how that that evolves and how their relationship evolves because they're going to be two of the best players among first-year players this year. I don't think there's any question about that. Bottom line is both of those guys, I thought, had a good start, and we're going to see this matchup for years to come as they both fight their way and their teams try to fight, get their teams to the NBA Finals, and they're going to have to go through each other to do that. Well, I love that for us because the future is bright. Gary, you were going to say something? Oh, I mean, just good. I'm impressed with Wimby Yamba, like, you know, in summer league, he looked like he was a little bit physically overwhelmed, but he looks like he's getting more comfortable. Apparently, he gained like he's gained 18 pounds in the last three months. So the Spurs are the right, perfect program for him. They're going to take him along slowly. They're going to have him playing in a perfect position. I remember my, you know, back in the day when I covered uh, the Sonics and Kevin Durant uh, as a rookie, he played the two guard. Right. People were like, that's crazy. But he was a 175 pound six foot nine, six foot 10 back then, uh, shooting guard, you know, he had all the skills of a guard, but he was 610. Um, he, he, you know, he was barely, I said before, barely 200 pounds. Uh, if that, I'm going to say 175, 180 and PJ called him Lismo used him as shooting guard that for his rookie year, um, to, to maximize his potential, maximize his spots, Make sure he wasn't playing against a lot of you know, the big burly guys back then. He wasn't playing against uh, those physical power forwards in the in the in the mid two thousands and the, the the you know the Oakleys and the, the little old there. But you know some of those guys that were just going to be shoving them around the paint. That wasn't going to happen. You know uh, he was playing on a perimeter. So I think it's a good idea for San Antonio to use Wimbiyama in the in the perimeter until he gets physically ready to play um, with the big guys. All right, before we close out, because I always do like a quick Twitter or X scan before we wrap up our podcast in case anything had break it, broken while we were chatting. Nothing broke necessarily, but Derek White did not make ESPN's top 100 ranked players list for this upcoming season. Do you think he should have been on that list? Top 100? Woo, yeah. that's tough. Yeah. Because here's the thing about top 100 mm-hmm. list. You got to keep in mind that the NBA, you know, you, you're talking about 30 plus teams and you're probably talking about the top three plus players. And on the Celtics, you know, you got Tatum and Brown, uh, you've got Porzingis, and you got Drew Holiday. I mean, you've got four guys right there that are going to be in that top 100 somewhere. And the idea of having five guys in the top 100, Someone is probably going to get slighted, and Derek, you, you can make a case that he got slighted. I'm not, I'm not sold on that though. I, you can make a case, but I'm not necessarily buying it. Yeah, I'm not. You know, like Sherrod said, like that's a, the league is a 450 players. So you're saying that Derek is, you know, the top 20 percent of players in the league, almost, you know, 20, 25 percent. Uh, I think it's on, it's, it's on the bubble. You know, mm-hmm. if he's now, if it was 200, then it'd be a problem. Yeah. You know, absolutely. he might be 116. I don't think that's offensive, right? Yeah. He's coming off a good, solid year, all defensive team. But next year, if he has another solid year, obviously he'll crack the 100, probably crack the 70 uh, mark if he, if he takes that step forward. What makes yeah. this fun is that Grant Williams is at number 97, and he was at 99 last year. <laughs> 
Hey, we're moving on up. On, right. No longer with this team. But that's all we have for this week's episode of the A-List Podcast. The season's here. They have two more preseason games until the real games begin. But we'll keep watching. We'll keep keeping you informed as to what's going on. If you haven't already, this is the perfect time to start sharing the podcast. Basketball's back. Send this episode to a Celtics fan as they prepare for this glorious year of fandom. And until then, for HR Blakely and Gary Washburn, I'm Kwani Lunas. This is the A-List Podcast. New FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday tickets from YouTube and YouTube TV. Ever wish you could navigate the betting field with the confidence of a pro? Enter Odds Are. They're not a sports book but they're the sports betting advisor you always needed. It's like having a playbook for smarter bets right in your pocket. I've been absolutely loving the experience, and I think you will too, especially since Celtics All Access listeners get a 30-day free trial. Elevate your game day and join the smart betting revolution. Go get it at oddsr.com slash Celtics. That's oddsr.com slash Celtics.